Okay, I'd like to call to order the Tuesday, August 20th, 2019 Sheboygan County Board of Supervisors meeting. Certification of compliance with the open meeting law. The agenda was posted on the 16th of August at 2.30 p.m. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Roll call. There are 25 supervisors present. Thank you, John. Approval of the July 16th, 2019 journal. Supervisor Glavin. Move to approve as sent. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Supervisor Ziegelbauer. I'll second that. Thank you, Supervisor Ziegelbauer. Any questions or comments? Seeing no lights, please push your I or nay button. Journals approve unanimously. Thank you. Consideration of appointments by the chairperson. To your joint county library planning committee, Thomas Wagner of Plymouth and Keith Obler of Plymouth. Supervisor Gehring. Mr. Chairman, I move to concur with the appointments of the chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Is there a second? Supervisor Damp. I will approve that. Thank you, Supervisor Damp. Any questions or comments? Charlie, do you have one? No. Any other? Okay, thank you. It's a little embarrassing appointing yourself to a committee, but I'm a big fan of libraries. I think it's important. I've been on there two different times, so I'm going to do it again. Not that I know of other things to do, so. Okay. Seeing no lights. Please push your I or nay button. Appointments are approved unanimously. Thank you. Consideration of appointments by county administrator. Board of Adjustments, Jeffrey Strube, Kelly Johnson, Charles Bourne. Joint County Library Planning Committee, William Gehring, Jacob Emmel, Sherry Spaeth, Jacqueline Romer, and to Traffic Safety Commission, Chris Nehring and Jacob Immel. Okay, we can take that in one motion unless somebody wants to divide the question. So I could use a motion on that, Supervisor Glavin. Move to approve. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Supervisor Conrady. Second. Thank you, Supervisor Conrady. Any questions or does anybody want to divide the question? Ready? Seeing no lights, please push your I or nay button. Those appointments are also approved unanimously. Thank you. Presentations. We have Brian Grunewald of Clifton Larson Allen for the comprehensive annual financial report for 2018. Evening, Brian. Hello, thank you for having me here this evening. Um, first item that I just want to address is uh, thanks for having me here. But uh, I also do want to touch on the fact that uh, some of you may be used to seeing us reference as Shank, effective January 1, Clifton Larson Allen uh, did merge with Shank. Uh, therefore, you'll see references to Clifton Larson Allen and uh, CLA. Um, in terms of the discussion tonight, I just want to remind everyone I did meet with the Finance Committee uh, previously. 
Um, we went through the management communication letter, touched briefly on the comprehensive annual financial report, and for purposes of, ton of tonight's discussion, just going to keep it a little bit more brief uh, and just put together a PowerPoint. The information included here is pulled from both of those uh, documents. Uh, and if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask as I move through the presentation. Okay, this first slide, just want to uh, give you a summary of the different components of the audit and the audit results. Uh, your audited financial statements, uh, they do include our auditor's opinion. That's considered to be an unmodified opinion. Essentially means that I believe that your financial statements are complete and accurate and in accordance with our professional standards. As part of every audit, we also consider the organization's internal control structure. So in addition to the numbers, we're also looking at how things are done, how you handle cash, how you pay your bills, etc. Uh, we refer to that as internal control. Um, from an internal control perspective, we do not issue an opinion, um, but if there are reportable conditions, we would be required to, to communicate those. I'm happy to report that there are no findings, no, no reportable conditions, uh, nothing from an uh, internal control perspective that's communicated as part of the audit process. So that's certainly good news, means you're doing things the right way. The, uh, the last item there, just focusing on federal and state awards, uh, because of the amount of federal and state aid that you receive, uh, we do additional compliance testing over those programs um, and happy to report that we don't have any findings or issues or concerns with, uh, with those as well. So good news from a compliance perspective. Okay, then I also just want to, uh, to highlight, um, in addition to the uh, review that you go through with Clifton Larson Allen, you also voluntarily uh, participate in a program through the Government Finance Officers Association. And as a part of that process, you continue to receive the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. Just want to remind you of that. I believe it's actually the fifth consecutive year that you've received that. So that's a nice award. So congratulations on that. And then I just want to step back. I have a few slides that discuss the financial condition, just things that I wanted to highlight as part of the process. This first slide just gives you a summary uh, of those items. The first item, first bullet point, is focusing on your fund balance. That's the number one main criteria or item that we look at from a financial perspective to judge your financial condition. Um, so you, you've got, uh, what you'll see is you've got very strong financial condition. Um, we'll talk about your policy with regards to your fund balance. Again, certainly good news from a fund balance perspective. We'll talk a little bit about Rocky Knoll. I've got a slide on that. You can see here in the slide that from a net position or equity perspective, You've increased your equity by about 327,000, and you've also increased your cash balances. Uh, so that's good news. In terms of the highway department, the internal service fund, your net position or equity that did increase 22.2 million. That is correct. Um, I just want to remind you that as part of that process, some of that is due to the accounting for the highway complex. So 21.4 million of that. Uh, did come from a transfer in or a capital contribution uh, from other funds, really just the, the way that that project was accounted for. Uh, your working capital also increased there. In terms of your employee benefit and insurance internal service fund, your net position and working capital did decrease. That decreased as planned. Um, the county does have a target in terms of the balance that they're um, benchmarking or shooting for in terms of that, so that reduction is certainly part of that overall plan. And then the last two items there, just stepping back and looking at your general obligation debt. From a general obligation debt perspective, uh, outstanding debt of 36.8 million as of 1231-2018. And as a reminder, there is a statutory debt limitation on that. You're actually at about 8% uh, of the statutory debt limitation. And then the last bullet point there is just commenting on the repayment of that outstanding principal. How quickly are you repaying that? Over the course of the next five years, you're scheduled to repay based on the agreements you had in place as of 1231-18, so that constantly changes, but as of that point in time, you were scheduled to repay 74% of that principal over the next uh, five years. Okay, now I just have a few slides that just want to focus on your general fund and the fund balance. So this first slide just gives you a snapshot of, of what's been happening with your overall general fund fund balance levels. Uh, and you can see the, the history here. Back in 2014, you're at 18.7 million. That increased to 23.7 million for 15 and 16. In the last two years, you've been at 21.5 million. Uh, there is additional information in your comprehensive annual financial report in terms of what makes up some of these individual categories. That's on pages 70 and 71 if you want to dig in and look at more detail. Um, but just from my perspective, a couple highlights. That non-spendable category, that includes things like delinquent taxes. You can see that that continues to come down. You were at 1.6 million back in 2014. 
decreasing to just over a million uh, as of 2018. That's a positive because it frees up those dollars, which are non-spendable based on our accounting definitions, and moves them into other categories and allows you to, to do other things with that money. So that's certainly good news. Um, the assigned category, that I like to call your planning opportunity, as you go through and, and earmark or identify specific projects that you'd like to do, it gives you the ability to assign those funds. As you've gone through the years, you can see um, you've identified different things that you'd like to, to spend your money on. For example, back in 2017, you had some additional dollars that were set aside for capital spending. So that's why there's a decrease from 17 to 18. And then the main category that I like to focus on is that unassigned category. Essentially, that's the amount that's available for working capital and contingency reserves. You can see back in 14, you're at about 15.6 million. You can see your history there. 16.2 million as of the end of 2017 and increasing up to 18.5 million at the end of 2018. Okay, and then if we move on to the next slide. So this slide gives you some perspective of how much unassigned fund balance do we have? How much should we have? How does this relate to the overall county policy? So the county's policy defines and has a maximum minimum percentage. You can see those here at 15 and 30%. Um, you can see the red line, that's your actual experience. And this is based on the governmental fund expenditures, uh, less your capital projects funds. Based on that policy, you can see during this time period, you've been operating essentially in the middle of your, of your policy. And ironically, at the end of 2018, you're at 22.9%, almost right in the middle um, of your policy. So keep doing what you're doing from a budgeting perspective um, and keep monitoring that throughout the year uh, and you'll continue to meet that policy. Does anyone have any questions or concerns with that? Any thoughts? So again, what this really means is from an overall fund balance perspective, you're in strong shape, you continue to be in strong shape. Okay, then I just wanna step back and talk briefly about Rocky, uh, Rocky Knoll. Here we're looking at your working capital. So that's essentially looking at your current assets versus your current liabilities. Uh, you can see your history and how that's, how that's increased. You know, back at a, in 2014, you were just over a million. On 2018, you're up to 3.5. And I will say, just note the increase from 2017 to 2018. That's really due to, I guess I would look at it as two components. One, your operating results. Uh, from an operating perspective, um, your operating results had an increase of about 300,000. And then in addition to that, you also received some additional state money. Um, it was really a one-time allocation of funds. And because of that state funding, it also allowed you to increase your cash balances and your working capital. So strong year there. From a cash perspective, as I mentioned on that previous slide, your cash balance has actually increased $849,000. So. This next slide just focuses on the highway department. Um, again, you can see their history here. Overall moving from 3.6 million at the end of 2017 up to 4.1 million at the end of 2018. Um, overall, again, positive trend over that five-year period. When I step back and look at those balances, I step back and compare to other uh, counties. Um, Clifton Larson Allen works with about 45 counties. Um, when I step back and look at how much working capital you have in comparison to the others, and if I isolate that in, in terms of your local peers here, um, you're in strong shape from a working capital perspective, shows your ability to do things like monitor your cash flow, maintain your cash flow, uh, monitor your fleet in terms of your equipment and your machinery cost pool. Um, so you're doing a great job there. And, and again, that working capital is a, is a strong balance in comparison to your peers. If anyone's had any questions, please feel free to ask. Okay, and then we just wanted to step back and also look at your employee benefit and insurance internal service fund. And again, as you can see here with your history, you were at 8.3 million back in 2014. Um, you can see you're down to 7.1 million. That's all part of your plan. Um, you've got a target in terms of where you want to get to. Um, so just keep managing that. And, and uh, I guess what I talk about or highlight is when you think of where you want to get to, just make sure as you go and move towards that target that you come and have a, a soft landing in on your, on your target but overall strong balances. And then just want to, uh, to step back and look at your general obligation debt. So this gives you a snapshot of the dollar amount of principal that you've had outstanding uh, at the end of each of the last five years. Back in 2014, you were at 35.2 million of outstanding debt. 
at the end of 2017 and 2018, right around 36.8 million. So that just gives you a snapshot of the overall uh, dollars that are outstanding on your general obligation debt. Again, as of 1231. And this next slide, the purpose of this, it tries to put in perspective um, how much of your budget is being used to repay principal and interest uh, on an annual basis. Um, so the common benchmark is the, is the red line, and, and bond rating agencies look at this. And you, they really don't want you to be above 20% in terms of your overall budget. You can see your blue line, the actual experience. You've been right around the 10% the last few years. You've been under 10%. Um, so that's considered to be a strong ratio, about half of, of, that, of that cap. So that gives you perspective on you know, that. This is coming right from your comprehensive annual financial report on page 114. And the other item that I mentioned in terms of benchmarking that is that statutory debt limit. As I mentioned earlier, you had about 8% of the overall statutory debt limit. I would never encourage you to get you know, real close to that limit. Uh, but again, if you step back and look at the surrounding communities, counties, um, what kind of percentage or where are they at, I can tell you you're in great shape from a, from a fund balance, uh, excuse me, from a debt percentage uh, there. Okay, any other uh, thoughts or comments on that? Okay, then this last slide, the management communication letter, we also use that as our opportunity to communicate uh, new things that are coming down the pipeline. Uh, the Governmental Accounting Standards Board does continue to issue new standards and statements. Uh, here's just two of them, there are others. Um, these are a little bit more meaningful. We continue to, to work with the county, we'll share information and make sure that those standards are properly implemented uh, when they are required to be. Okay, any other thoughts or questions or comments? Okay, I'll just, I guess I'll just say in closing, obviously you're doing things the right way in compliance on federal and state aid and overall from a, from a financial perspective, keep doing what you're doing here in, in real strong financial condition. Okay, all right, okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. Did I go off? Okay, uh, public addresses. Evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you have literature laying on your desk about the upcoming 25th anniversary. Believe it or not, that Veterans Memorial has been there 25 years already. And uh, with your somewhat support from this board and everything, that's why it's still there. And the veteran group that oversees that is, you know, f somewhat financially sound, and we are able to maintain and make sure it's a beautiful place. Uh, on their literature, you can see we're having an event there starting on Friday. American Huey 369 is coming in and it'll be there around noon. It'll fly until about 6 o'clock in the evening. Saturday, it's going to fly from 9 in the morning till 1. It's going to take about a one hour uh, break while we have a ceremony on Saturday at 1 o'clock. You're all invited to come to that ceremony at 1 o'clock. There will be chairs there for people to sit on. Right now, the good Lord is looking like it's going to have sunshine for us, so we don't have to put up any tents, so we're going to have gracious weather. The Huey will start flying again after that, and it'll also fly on Sunday from 9 until 3. It'll depart to go back to Peru, Indiana. In the Sheboygan County History Museum is going to be different displays of uh, World War I uh, war era. Uh, it is 100 years since uh, World War I has uh, term, term terminated, so we thought we would honor the veterans that served in that World War I era. Uh, going back to the Huey, if uh, any of you want to experience it, you can buy a $100 membership to the American Huey and fly on that helicopter. Uh, I was a door gunner, crew chief in Vietnam. I've had that experience. I'll tell you this, you're gonna be sitting on a seat and your toes will be hanging over the edge of the helicopter. They fly with open doors. And it's, it's quite the experience for you to take. 
also um, want to thank you for uh, putting a budget together and moving the Veterans Service Office out to Forest Avenue. Uh, I've been there many times. That office is so convenient. Uh, you can park your car and walk the length of this room and you're, you're in the office. It's all one level. Handicapped accessible is just great. Um, the, the place is laid out nice. Um, the gentlemen and the ladies that are working there are doing a fantastic job. I've heard nothing but positives from the vets that have been there. Also, I'd like to thank the, the board for putting the budget together every year. We put flags on the cemeteries for our, our fallen vet, veterans, and every year that budget grows because we're losing more veterans. The next thing I'm going to tell you, thank you for your service. I know instead of being here tonight, you could be in a happy place sitting next to a Weber grill, Johnsonville brats, and a cold, cold one in your hand. So thank you for your time and your service. If you wouldn't be here, we wouldn't have a Sheboygan County. So again, thank you. Any questions? Well, thank you, Alan, and thank you very much for your service and those very kind words. I know when you said cold one, you meant a lemonade, right? Okay. <laughs> All right, next, uh, Krista Johansson of Elkhart Lake regarding the ATV UTV ordinance. My name is Krista Bertram Johansson of W5668 County Road FF in the town of Rhine. I am an attorney and I serve on three committees created by the board of the town of Rhine. I tell you this so that you know I do have an operational understanding of how ordinances work. I attended the recent Lawn Planning, Resources, Agriculture and Extension Committee joint, joint Committee meeting. Unfortunately, I was the sole community member who opposes the passing of this ordinance, who was aware of the meeting in time to be heard. I object to this ordinance, which will allow ATV and UTV drivers who are not required to hold valid state driver's licenses to share our local and county roadways. <coughs> However, tonight, I will spend my time directing your attention to a few key weaknesses in the ordinance itself as I see them. At line 13 of the ordinance as presented, the language states that this board has determined that, quote, portions of certain county highways shall be designated as ATV routes as connectors. I think it gives this body more flexibility and authority down the line to state that certain county highways may be designated. It gives the Transportation Department and Planning, Resources, Agriculture and Extension Committee the ability to take the totality of circumstances into consideration rather than reducing them to being a rubber stamp when a requested route makes it through a town board and is submitted to the county. I, recommended, I recommend changing the language from shall to may. At lines 45 through 56 regarding who will purchase, install, maintain and inspect signage the ordinance as written suggests that this is that it is the group requesting the route who will incur the expense and responsibility. The testimony by the ATV clubs at the committee hearing suggested that towns are responsible and Wisconsin statute 23.33 sub 8 sub E suggests that it is the town, village, city or county that shall be the responsible party to erect signs. It is a matter of importance to your constituents that you not accidentally obligate the towns, villages, cities, or the county to expenses for the benefit of a few ATV riders who may or may not bring economic value to the area. I recommend the board vote no on this ordinance as it is likely to going to obligate local governments, not the ATV clubs, to the significant expense of signage. At line 58, it is unclear regarding the requirement for which routes are to be allowed on county highways. As it is written, a group could make the argument that even if the route does not connect two trails, if there exists a gas station or a repair shop on that road, that road is fair game. Keep in mind that the stated purpose in the preamble is to, quote, connect trail opportunities. This is not how the ordinance reads. 
I recommend the board rewrite this section so that it is clear that any county highway that becomes an ATV route is for the strict utility of connecting trails or short spurs from the route to allow access to gas stations and repair shops. Finally, section four titled conditions of the proposed ordinance does restate some of the rules as laid out in the state statute. One important and glaring omission in my opinion are the rules regarding drivers under the age of 16 and roadways. An ATV driver under the age of 16 is required to be accompanied by a parent or another adult designated by the parent if he or she is to be operating on sections of roadway designated as ATV routes. Under no conditions is a UTV driver under the age of 16 allowed to operate on roadways. It is my belief and recommendation that these important rules be reiterated in this ordinance for the safety of our under 16 ATV and UTV drivers. These rules can be found at Wisconsin Stat 23.33 sub 5 sub A sub 4 and 23.33 sub 5 sub AM 3. I recommend the board requires added language making it clear that the use of ATVs by children under the age of 16 without an approved accompanying adult or the use of a UTV by children under the age of 16 are strictly prohibited on our roadways even if they are designated as ATV routes. Overall, I hope that the board rejects this ordinance. If it votes to approve, I request doing so after making the changes I bring to you tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Okay, letters, communications, and announcements. I have one. It's a letter from <clears throat> Paul Gilk, a supervisor of Lincoln County regarding redistricting, which we've received several times. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change my end. I'm, I'm going to refer that to executive committee. All right. Okay. County administrator's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Well, I think if we all work for Sir Geno, Lou and Louis Gentine would be probably passing out the cheese right now after that budget overview and fiscal implications. Keith, what do you think? I mean, that was pretty nice. Did anybody bring any cheese along? No, no balloons? I tell you, uh, we've come to expect this kind of fiscal track record and strong fiscal condition in Sheboygan County, as we should. And it happens because of the team we have in place. You know, I think most people recognize, at least if you're part of Sheboygan County government, it's the collaboration and teamwork amongst our county board, our department heads, our staff, that year after year we hear a report like this about our strong fiscal track record, our strong fiscal health, and the good work that Wendy and her team are doing to earn that achievement of excellence in financial reporting year after year. So it, it truly is something we all should take pride in and, and appreciate that good report. With that said, I want to talk a little bit about our 2020 budget. And as the Finance Committee Chairman knows, Bill Gehring and many of the Finance Committee members who have been watching this closely, it's not getting any easier. Net new construction is the predominant form of property tax levy we rely upon. And as you all recall from the county board leadership forum we had in June, and of course we start working on our budget process already in February and March, we were hoping for a net new construction increase of somewhere in the range of 1.6%, something a little closer to the last three years. We actually saw a decrease in our net new construction. So rather than relying on about $650,000 for our 850 employees, 19 departments, and about 200 programs and services, uh, we're going to see a 1.26% increase in net new construction. Let's make sure I'm reading that right. 1.26% or $536,000. Of course, it's not the only revenue we rely upon. We receive state revenue, federal funds, some private fees, what have you, but it is the primary source of revenue to support many of our programs and the people who uh, implement those programs. What net new construction has to do with providing law enforcement and health and human services to the neediest of the needy and improving mental health 
programs and services and providing rehabilitation and other treatment opportunities, protecting our land and water resources, I don't know. But that's the rules that we have in play and that's the amount that we're going to have to work with for 2020. To quickly put that in perspective, and I hope every board member remembers this, if we provide a modest 2% wage increase to our employees, which is pretty close to CPI, we provide that. That's more than 500,000. That's closer to a million dollars for a modest wage increase. With health insurance in there, we're looking at a little over $2 million just to sustain our programs and services and maintain uh, what we have in play. So we go into the year with a little over a $2 million gap for wage and benefits alone, not to add new programming, not to add new services, but to maintain the team we have in play and we're going to see about a $536,000 increase in the property tax levy. So it goes without saying that the process is challenging, and I can't thank enough all the people involved. Our finance director and her team have provided stellar assistance and support to all the departments. We have now met, Wendy and I, and many of you, if you've joined us from a respective liaison committee, we have now met with nearly all the departments, there are a couple out there yet, and every single department came in with a budget that hit the target that we established through my office and certainly the finance committee. Every single department, every single department had hit their target, which is wonderful. That's the expectation. Years ago, that didn't necessarily happen. Now. It absolutely happens. With that said, there are a number of them, seven specifically, that are asking for some additional property tax levy, either to maintain a program or service, such as providing mental health counseling in our detention center, or to enhance a program or service based on community need. Seven departments came in just under the target, but that amounted to about $69,000, $70,000, the overall additional levy requests amount to closer to $650,000. So we have a gap. The Health and Human Services Department was one of the bright spots. I see Matt Stripmotter here today. It wasn't my plan to point him out, but thank you, Matt. Matt, as you know, has only been with us for a little over six months or so, eight months, something like that. He's going through his first budget process. He worked in La Crosse County for 20 years. He brings a wealth of experience, insight that he is now sharing with our team here, and we're going to be able to tap into some additional state resources that we hadn't in the past. That will free up some property tax levy that will allow the Health and Human Services Department to address other needs and also allow other departments to have a balanced budget and address theirs. So I am very pleased with the budget process to date, as I shared with the Finance Committee. You can feel it a little bit more this year. I mean, every year as resources get tighter, we all feel a little bit more, but overall the process is going very, very well, and um, we'll, we'll have a balanced budget as we always do. Going forward, fiscal outlook. If we continue to have net new construction increases of five, 600,000, and we want to provide pay for performance increases of up to 2% and have health insurance increases of 10, 15%, we will have to cut programs and services. We're going to have to make some adjustments. And I don't think anyone is looking forward to that kind of discussion. Big picture, our final tax rate, right now it's $5.30. Based on the snapshot we have in front of you, we think it'll be $5.22, so we'll see a modest reduction in the property tax rate. The property tax levy, as we targeted with the county board and the finance committee early in the process, we're looking at a 2.5% increase. Yes, that's more than the net new construction, but the reason for it, in part, is we're able to tap into some additional levy flexibility because our debt service obligations are going down. We're seeing our debt, our overall debt, going down. And because of that, we're being rewarded by the state to have a little bit more flexibility. So a 2.5% increase in the property tax levy increase, a modest 
one and a half percent reduction in the property tax rate. You also have the five-year capital plan in front of you that was distributed this evening. I encourage everyone to take a look at that. It's a high-end summary. Don't hesitate to ask any department head involved with that plan or the respective committees involved with that plan. The Finance Committee went through the five-year capital plan very carefully. They've introduced it tonight. That'll be acted on next month, and I can give a little update on what's in that, but I encourage you to take a look at it. The self-imposed debt service caps that we put in place, I think as uh, Brian mentioned earlier, we could borrow so much more under state guidance. Of course it wouldn't be fiscally responsible to do that. It's kind of remarkable, you know, that they allow folks to borrow so much more, which is not the answer. But the board, a number of years ago, imposed our own state, um, our own self-imposed debt service obligations. And because of that, we're seeing our overall debt obligations go down. And Wendy has included a chart on that as well in your plan. There is a spike going forward if we end up building a $20 million detention facility, but as everyone in the room knows, we're hoping to avoid that. Also on your desk, and I want to thank Henry for reminding me last month, I think it was at the last county board meeting, Henry said, well, how are we doing with the sales tax revenue? And on your desk is a copy of the latest spreadsheet on sales tax revenue. It's encouraging. You may recall in 2018, we budgeted about $9 million. We actually received closer to 9.8. I gotta start bringing my cheaters here, don't I, Wendy? Yes. In 2019, we budgeted 9.3 million for this year, and it's coming in from a projection standpoint, it looks like it might be closer to 10.2 million. And then of course, we've got the Ryder Cup next year, and that's gonna provide about $130 million of additional economic benefits statewide. What it means specifically for Sheboygan County, we don't know, but we did up our projection there for the 2020 budget and put 10.5 million. As you know, the focus is on transportation and maintaining our transportation system. Greg Schnell and his team are doing a great job maintaining at minimum of 30 miles of overlay improvement to the roads every year. And then we share some of that revenue with our local municipalities. We're the only county to do that. And of course, we're also providing some direct property tax relief as a result of the sales tax revenue. So it's working out well. So you have a chart there showing how much we received each month. And then also a little comparison to uh, a couple of other counties. And then finally, I just wanted to point out, you know, the Wisconsin Counties Association really provides us with a lot of support, sometimes support that we, we don't take advantage of to the extent we could. But the Wisconsin Counties Association magazine, I will readily admit, sometimes I don't open this up right away. And again, I'll give credit where credit's due. I saw Henry on his way to the property committee meeting today and he said, did you get a chance to look at the magazine yet? And I said, no, there's an article in here on the ATVs and what's happening statewide and some legal uh, issues surrounding it, so I thought that was kind of timely with the topic you have before you. And then there's also a nice summary of the overall state biennial budget, which was a little more positive for a change, as you know. So I encourage you to look at it if you haven't already. And then I generally wouldn't comment on a presenter uh, coming up here and offering a suggestion, but I thought the suggestions were certainly worthy of consideration. Uh, the shell or a may, I mean, this is a discretionary area where the Transportation Committee has authority to consider a request from a municipality and the, in, in collaboration with the director make a decision. So that may be an adjustment you want to make. Uh, the Corp Council might have a suggestion there. Uh, and then as for the other areas, again, that would be up to the PRACOM committee and the, and the Transportation Committee if they wanted to consider some of those refinements. Or if this isn't time sensitive, maybe refer it back to the committee and come back forward with it if you feel you need to tighten it more. I don't know. I haven't been as close with this issue as transportation and PRACOM, but Greg may have some suggestions on that. That's totally up to the board. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Adam. Consideration of committee report, executive committee, resolution number seven. Regarding disallowance of Brown claim against Sheboygan County, recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will we'll move for adoption. <coughs> Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. <coughs> Supervisor Conrady. Second, Mr. Chairman. 
Thank you, Supervisor Conradi. Any questions or discussion? This is not uncommon. Sometimes the insurance company will ask us to refer to do this, and then it kind of speeds up the process is what it really gets down to. Correct? Thank you. I shouldn't, I shouldn't do that. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Uh, Supervisor Project, do you have a question? Or? No, I was just going to. Okay. Seeing no lights then, if you want to push your I or nay button. Resolutions approved unanimously. Thank you. Consideration of Committee Report Finance Committee, Ordinance Number 3. Regarding amending Supervisor and County Board Chairperson Compensation Recommendation to enact. Supervisor Testrudi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move for approval. Thank you, Supervisor Testrudi. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Any questions or comments? Supervisor Brula. We just, thank you. Sure. Sorry, I'm not used to all this. That's yet. okay, take okay. your time. So um, we just heard Adam tell us how difficult of a time that we're having with net new construction, um, meeting some of our employees' insurance needs and um, rate increases. I do not believe at the moment that we should give these increases to the county board. Okay. This is a public service position. I believe we are more than adequately compensated for what we're doing. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, not to enter into debate, I just wanted to point out the, these ha the um, we're not increasing the wage that hasn't been increased since 1985. The per diems were last increased in 1999. And uh, my personal opinion was, if we're ever going to do it, at some point, we, I respect your opinion. But uh, I think it was time to do something along these lines. So that's why I proposed it, as my letter stated. Supervisor Epping. Uh, thank you, Chairman Wagner. In regards to that, um, I know for the past few years, I've run unopposed from my position. I think if, if there was uh, other compensation that might attract as we as we try to do, even with our departments, attract and retain good personnel. So I think that's a, an incentive for other people to get involved with county government. So I will support this. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Epping. Anybody else? Seeing no lights, uh, if you'd please push your I or an A button. Trying to vote. <laughs> Ordinance is approved 24 I, one nay. Thank you. Okay, consideration, report, law, planning, resources, agriculture, and extension committees. Ordinance number four, designating all terrain vehicle routes and regulating the operation of all terrain vehicles. Uh, here, I'm going to propose that uh, I do have some concerns. I think our committees have done a good job, but I think there are some questions out there. So instead of doing it at this level, I'm going to suggest I'm going to make the, the most I can refer this back. And uh, unless you disagree with me and make a motion against that and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to refer it back to, pardon, to the Transportation Committee. Uh, Supervisor Testrudi, is that fine with you? been brought up that might uh, need some consideration and it's hard to do that just on the fly with, yes. the, with the group here so yeah, I, that that is my concern so I'm going to refer that back unless there's an objection uh, to uh, the Transportation Committee Supervisor OJ thank you mr. chairman I won't bother objecting <laughs> thank you and, and and there was a lot of good intentions and a lot of people involved here but I just think it's the the good thing to do. So I'll do that then as long as there's nobody objecting. Thank you. Okay, now I'm going to turn it over to the Vice Chair. Resolutions introduced. Resolution number eight from the Finance Committee regarding 2025 year capital plan. Resolution number eight will be referred to the Executive Committee 
Resolution number nine from Health and Human Service Committee. Requesting the Wisconsin Legislature to end use of personal conviction waivers for school and daycare center immunizations. Resolution number nine will be referred to the Executive Committee. There are no ordinances introduced. Next item of business is adjournment. Supervisor Bemis. Thank you, Supervisor Bemis. Supervisor Glavin. Second. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. And a reminder, the legislative breakfast will be at Lakeshore Technical College. September 9th. Brian. Supervisor Hoffman. We are adjourned.